And now to our nation's capital, where even though Parliament is not sitting, some senior pollies are still hard at work, and none more so than our favourite finance minister, Senator Matthias Cormann. Welcome back to the show. Uh, good to be back. In your new exalted position. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. And I know you've got a bit of a cold, so we'll be kind to you tonight. You've got a big week ahead, Senator. Uh, the details of the Commission of Audit come out, the RBA annual report, and your favourite mining tax legislation is rumoured to be coming to um, fruition, to get rid of it. So let's start with the first one. All eyes on the Commission of Audit. What can we expect to come out this week? Uh, well, obviously, uh, what we said before the election uh, is that uh, we would put uh, the budget back onto a believable pathway uh, to surplus. And, of course, uh, in a calm, methodical uh, and uh, orderly fashion, uh, we've set out uh, to do that. We've already started uh, to uh, assess uh, all of the uh, discretionary uh, grants uh, spending. We will now be uh, announcing in the, uh, very, very soon uh, the Commission of Audit, which uh, uh, will have the job to uh, make recommendations on how the operations of government can be made uh, more efficient. It will make recommendations which will feed into the, uh, into the next budget process. And, of course, uh, we are hard at work at uh, identifying uh, ways uh, to uh, bring the budget back to surplus uh, in a credible fashion as soon as possible. And in the meantime, we're taking, uh, we're, we're taking steps to uh, take all of that lead out of our the saddleback, which has accumulated under labour, like the carbon tax, the mining tax, and so on, uh, so that our economy can grow more strongly again, which will help us uh, with uh, our budget as well. Now, just to the Commission of Audit, in the days when you were in opposition and there was a so-called budget emergency when it looked sad, people thought that you, the impression they were given was that you would do a very quick Commission of Audit to announce the spending cuts because it was necessary. It now appears you'll be taking a longer term view and doing a broader review uh, and not in so much of a rush. Is that correct? Well, a couple of things. Firstly, of course, during the election campaign, we announced a, a whole series of savings as well as a whole series of policies. And uh, what we said during the campaign was that those policies and savings uh, would leave the budget better off uh, over the forward estimates to the tune of $6 billion. The Parliamentary Budget Office uh, last Friday came out and gave our costings the big tick of approval, which, of course, uh, proved once and for all that Labor's uh, scare campaign over the last few years about a supposed coalition uh, black hole uh, was uh, completely dishonest uh, and inaccurate. Now, uh, you know, we, we are, uh, the Commission of Audit is uh, going to report to government in two phases. There'll be a, an initial uh, report which will uh, feed into the 2014-15 uh, budget process and, and then there'll be a final report uh, which will uh, give us uh, some recommendations beyond that. But in, in a general sense, the purpose is uh, to ensure that the operations of government are as efficient as possible, that taxpayers' money is spent as wisely as possible. We are looking for uh, structural re recommendations in terms of structural change that will help us uh, achieve those efficiencies. I mean, the easy savings, for want of a better word, or, or the initial uh, set of savings, of course, were identified in the lead-up to the election. The Commission of Audit was always uh, meant uh, to take us beyond uh, the savings that we've identified in the but, lead up to the election. But is it fair to say that the sense of urgency that surrounded the budget position does not seem to be there now and you're more willing to let it go a bit longer and look more broadly, that there's no great rush? No, that, that is not fair to say. I mean, we do face a budget emergency. We've, we've inherited a budget in a mess from the Labor Party. Uh, a $30 billion deficit this year and growing. Uh, government net debt heading for $200 billion and growing. Uh, we're on track to reach uh, the uh, legislated $300 billion uh, gross debt uh, ceiling by Christmas. Uh, so uh, we do have to take uh, important action. But like, I mean, you know, what we are doing though is we're doing that in a calm and methodical fashion. Uh, the, the way to respond to a budget emergency is not uh, through a panicked, chaotic approach like uh, was, uh, the way, was the way way too often under the Labor Party, making things worse rather than better. better. Uh, when you face an emergency, you actually got to make sure that you take a calm, methodical and structured approach so that the decisions you make actually will leave to sustainable efficiencies and savings over time uh, and not just uh, leave you worse off uh, than when you started. So still in a budget emergency but not so much of a crisis that you have to do emergency measures hurried? Well, 
Uh, it is a budget emergency. You've got to remember, in 2007, the Labor Party inherited a budget uh, with no government net debt, uh, with a $20 billion surplus, uh, with about $50 billion worth of uh, cash at the bank. The government was collecting more than $1 billion in net interest payments. And fast forward, and of course, uh, the position has massively deteriorated. And I know that the government always blames uh, the global financial crisis in 08 or 09, uh, but the point is that they. Somebody's just interrupted me. Sorry, it, are keep you going. I'm sorry about that. Like the, the Sydney studio just spoke to me in my ear. Not oh, sure why, no, but, very but sorry anyway, about that. that happens to me all the time. <laughs> Welcome to our world. <laughs> well, but, uh, well, well, yes, you were saying there you that go. the so, previous government. You slipped and called them the government. I think you meant the previous government. Always the previous the government. GFC. Well, the previous government blamed, blamed the GFC, but of course what, what you've got to remember is that they benefited from the best terms of trade, the highest uh, commodity prices on record, uh, f more than 15 percent above uh, those uh, under the Howard government, even at their lowest point. Uh, and, and the promises they made about returning the budget back to surplus from 2012-13 onwards were all made after the GFC, after the information in relation to the GFC was so, known. Uh, cut, cut a long story short, good. the budget is in a mess. There is a budget emergency, uh, but the way to deal with an emergency is by making calm, methodical, uh, well-considered decisions, not by uh, going back to the bad old Labour way of uh, panicked, chaotic, dysfunctional decision-making. OK, you won't say it, but I still say then it must be an emergency where you can still have a reasoned way to deal with it rather than a crisis where you have to rush and panic. No panic. Well, uh, we, we, we are making decisions in the national interest in a calm and methodical okay. fashion, that's right. OK. You mentioned the debt ceiling before, um, which we reach in, Jan in late December, I think. Uh, Joe Hockey said last week, talk about raising it another $100 million. Given what we've just seen in the US, what can you say to calm the horses here that go, oh no, debt ceiling US, we're not in any way in their position, are we? Well, the point we made in uh, May when uh, the former government and the former Treasurer Wayne Swan released the last budget was that it was quite reckless and irresponsible for Wayne Swan not to legislate at that point in time uh, to lift the debt ceiling, given that he was forecasting gross debt uh, to head for, for $370 billion over the forward estimates uh, and to nearly $300 billion by Christmas at that time. Since then, of course, there's been a $12 billion deterioration in the budget bottom line for 13 14 in. So what we said to Wayne Swan in May uh, was that it was quite irresponsible for him uh, not to legislate an increase in the debt ceiling at that time. Uh, what we're now doing is, given the mess we've inherited uh, from the Labor Party, given how uh, the uh, budget is trending, and of course the position deteriorated by about $30 billion over the forward estimates from the budget in May uh, to the pre-election economic and fiscal outlook in August, well, we will be uh, legislating to increase uh, the debt ceiling. Uh, that will be one of the early uh, pieces of uh, legislation that will come before the parliament after uh, the carbon tax repeal legislation of course but i would suspect i mean in australia the, the approach to uh, the debt limit ha has always been uh, more mature uh, both sides of politics i mean we, we have supported uh, in the final analysis, all of the uh, proposed increases in the debt ceiling that were put to the okay, parliament so, by the former so government, we would a, expect the Labor Party to do the same. Uh, yes, so it'll be a lot calmer and uh, more grown up than we've seen Th in the That US. would be our expectation. Just back to the budget emergency and the calm and methodical way, um, many in the financial community are asking, back to my point about the fact that there was an urgency before the election, um, the mid, the MIFO that many expected would be coming out before for Christmas is now being put back to January. I gather there was a bit of consumer confidence issues there. Again, isn't that another indication that things yeah. aren't so urgent, that you're not rushing that out? Well, I mean, that's not uh, quite right. I mean, firstly, uh, the legislation, the Charter of Budget Honesty, does provide that the mid-year economic and fiscal outlook uh, can be uh, released by the Treasurer uh, up until uh, the end of January after the budget. Now, what we have said is that we would be releasing the mid-year economic and fiscal outlook before Christmas. Uh, and, and of course, uh, you know, we, we are currently uh, working uh, through all of that, making oh, so sure that all So you are still going to release it at Christmas because there was an impression given that it might be put off till January. So you're saying uh, it will are, be still before Christmas? 
the, the legislation provides that it can be released uh, uh, by the uh, by the end of January, but we we have already announced that we would be releasing it before Christmas, indeed. Okay. Now you must be delighted. Your dreaded, hated uh, mining tax. It looks like the legislation will come forward this week. Unlike the carbon tax, do you expect Labor to um, to wave this one through? You don't expect a fight on it. I would assume it hasn't been mentioned as a fight. Well. I mean, if, if the Labour Party was focused on our national interests, if they were focused on what is required to strengthen our economy uh, at a time when we are still facing uh, some significant global economic challenges, then they would support it. I mean, you've got to remember, uh, our repeal bill, that is, uh, you've got to remember that the, the mining tax not only is tying up an important industry for Australia in massive additional unnecessary red tape, it hasn't raised any meaningful revenue, it won't raise any meaningful revenue, uh, yet the former government already spent all the money they thought it would raise uh, and more. Uh, so what we're putting uh, forward and what we will be putting to the parliament is a package uh, which uh, abolishes both uh, the mining tax uh, and the uh, spending, uh, the unfunded spending that the Labor Party recklessly and irresponsibly attached to it. And so uh, the, the incredible situation actually is that ab abolishing the mining tax package will leave the budget better off to the tune of many billions of dollars. So uh, if the Labour Party is interested in helping us improve the budget bottom line, if they're interested in helping us strengthen the economy and create more jobs, uh, then they would support that legislation. Uh, if they just want to play uh, politics or, or uh, stuck, stick with uh, misguided ideology, uh, then they won't. So let's see what they do. Let's see, and I'm sure you'll be celebrating it. I have one more quick question, because we're nearly out of time, but um, one commentator today raised the question when the RBA annual report comes out this week, um, they might announce a profit. Uh, the previous government uh, did a bit of a cash grab for that profit, which was criticised by your side. Uh, if there's a profit, what will you be doing with it? Well, uh, you're certainly right uh, in saying uh, that the um previous government fleeced uh, the RBI as they fleeced a whole series of uh, government business enterprises because they were trying uh, desperately to keep the illusion uh, of a surplus in 2012-13 alive for as long as possible. They quite recklessly ran down uh, the um, capital uh, available to the Reserve Bank. Uh, look, I mean, obviously, we'll, let's see uh, what the uh, results are and, and the Treasurer. This is, of course, very much in the area of responsibility uh, of, of the Treasurer. And, and, I mean, let's see what the results are. Uh, we'll make some uh, decisions once we've got all of the information in front of us. Thank you very much for your time tonight, Senator Cormann, Finance Minister. Always good to be here. I'll be back. You will. <laughs> Time for a short break. We'll be back with Labour MP Michael Danby on Huawei next.